conference uh, in reality. This is the biggest catalyst. Um, and I've been kind of watching over the counter stocks for quite some time, and nothing is kind of similar like what is happening with uh, Protext. So they had the amazing reverse merger news, um, which is a win-win, uh, if you ask me, um, especially given the circumstances of what's happening in the market. Can't complain with that. And not only that, though, pretty much uh, less than a week after, give or take, they have a uh, conference to go over exactly what their plans are. So I think um, normally it's not that easy when it comes down to over-the-counter stocks. It's a little bit hard for to kind of figure out what it is. Technically, it does start in about 30 minutes. I just wanted to go over some basic uh, things that you might may or may not know. Um, hopefully answer some questions, but I think the nitty gritty will come down to actually listening to the conference. I do have this one up right now, um, uh, Avalon. Uh, I don't think you guys necessarily care uh, too much about that. Um, it's a pretty basic company, but it's the same criteria that will happen for Protext. Um, just um, there's a little bit longer. Obviously, Protex does have, even in South Africa, I think the integration, what makes it very appealing um, was the fact that they, I don't know, maybe uh, cost-wise, uh, it does, especially I've covered a lot of cannabis companies in North America-wise, and uh, the cost associated with North American is significantly higher. So maybe this is why they're going towards this. There's a lot of reasons why. I think Protex, this is why I covered it early on, like late uh, mid last year. Um, which even at that stage, when I look back at that video, they were talking about a merger, even at that stage. This is why um, the South African, the RSAMMD, uh, they have even came out with the news saying that they've been ta in talks for this for a very long time, for years. So clearly they were the ones, they never came forward, there was no official name last year on who they were talking to, just the rumor was that they were going to go pink current, which was very true, and did come uh, obviously true um, and then there was that merger talks which that caused it to go up because anything over the counter when it comes down to a merger is good typically they just merge with another smaller um, junk stock if you ask me my own two cents but this when it comes down to protex they merged or did a reverse merger with a big organization um, so i think this is a uh, very interesting time and uh, obviously like I said hasn't officially started yet but given how where we are at we're kind of pulling back a little bit but I think that is reasonably so um, because I don't think we go up this mount um, without some consolidation overall and very healthy um, it does appear that we did hit a, a bottom of around one and a quarter cents uh, give or take so I'm very excited uh, to say the least. Let me know if you guys have any comments, questions, or anything like that. Um, but similarly, um, as far as format wise, I'm just going to um, obviously I'll mute myself, go over the conference uh, on which I'll be able to uh, kind of provide uh, my context uh, on if you and plus if you guys have any questions afterwards, I'll definitely be able to go through all of that with you guys. Oh, thanks for, oh, D. Lou, you were not first. Oh, you closed some this morning? Uh, it starts at, uh, Michael, it starts at 12.30, so in about uh, 30 minutes, that's uh, Eastern. So hopefully, um, because keep in mind during this time frame, this is when they're going to be going over their short and uh, with, or intermediate. So obviously short and middle, median uh, kind of, uh, what did they exactly say? Short and long term basically uh, plans. Yeah, I'll find the actual news article, but they, uh, yeah, basically they're actually going to go through their plans, what their uh, intentions are, um, and like I said, when it comes down to an over-the-counter stock, don't really get too many experiences such as this. Um, I've never personally even heard of uh, that emerging, uh, what is it, the emerging growth conference, um, but 
it does look like this is the right kind of venue for uh, a company of this size. And keep in mind, just looking at um, some basic news for that, just going to pull up some Ortex. See, so right now, I think this is where we've gone up so much because right now 132.35 million is what the market cap is. Um, hypothetically, if even what they are saying and what the forecast is, what the um, it, it can be done and what the assumption is, at least this could be a 500 million uh, market cap company. So still given even as much as we've gone up, we can still roughly about 3x, if not more. So. I think this is why it's getting a lot of excitement and not only that, it's maintaining the amount of volume um, because when it comes to over-the-counter stocks, you need volume. You need people to uh, willingly get in. Um, so this is why on even on the intraday today, you see that big candle going on um, because in reality it, uh, let's see, doesn't want to load the one-day chart, but you, while that loads, Let's see, I'll take a look at the chat. Super cash, I love it. Yeah, it starts at 12.30 Eastern, 25 minutes, but most likely they are going to be starting at least uh, opening the door uh, roughly about 15 minutes early. This one right here does close at, it looks like uh, 12.15, and this one starts at 12.30. But same kind of format. I did mute this because I'm sure you guys don't necessarily need to hear it, um, but if you guys have any questions that you'd like me to ask, I can definitely do so. Um, not to Avalon, but obviously to Protext. Um, but I'll, I'll definitely try and ask one or two questions, keep them on the ball. Um, because I think a lot of people want to know, and especially based on the volume, a lot of people see a lot of upside with this. Um, and I'm one for like to pointing, I like pointing out the obvious as well. So if there, a company is ever ignoring something, um, even on a lot of other companies I cover, such as Lucid, uh, SoFi, even during SoFi's recent shareholder meeting, I ask questions and luckily enough, they answer them um, because I, I wanna know. Um, obviously I'm an investor with a lot of this. Um, I don't have too much. Uh, I only have uh, roughly about half a million um, uh, but that was from a long time ago. So it's gone up quite a lot, but still in reality, um, I'm sure a lot of people have a lot more, but still at the end of the day, it has a lot of good potential. And I think this is a lot of people are excited about Protext because not only is it good for Protext, but I think it's really rejuvenating over the counter stocks because in 2020, uh, or like late 2020 ish, or sorry, February, I think 14th, exactly. That's when the SEC started to really go down hard on the over-the-counter stocks. That's kind of ever since then, it's been really very much uh, feared and nobody really gets into over-the-counter stocks, but I think this is now starting to rejuvenate that, uh, that desire. And trust me, when I say this, you can make a lot of good money on over-the-counter stocks. I'm sure a lot of you guys are already aware of that. Yep. If they bump this over $1, that would be amazing LS. Oh, thanks, John. I appreciate that. Anytime. Glad to glad to uh, go over this. And uh, Patrick, maybe they. I don't. I can't see them doing that because keep in mind this is more so a conference for. I think they're going to be talking more operational based. I can't see them talking already getting right to it about reducing the outstanding shares. Um. But I could be wrong. It would be very surprising if they do. But uh, in the end, I, I can't see that happening. Oh, thanks, Danny. Yeah, Danny, I, I could see like five cents. That That's more of a realistic thing, depending on what they say. They Obviously, a lot could come from that. And also, you have to factor in the whole cannabis market uh, throughout the whole world has been very much uh put down for a very long time and not necessarily just North America. So they're doing this and getting a, a pretty good discount. If you ask me, um, especially even years from now, um, they, there's a lot of things depending on what their growth pattern is, what they plan and their expectation is. Um, but 
this is why I highly suggest watching the charts because once they say something in the actual conference that is hopefully good, uh, again, hopefully, you'll see the price jump up significantly. So right now there is about 205 million shares being traded right now. Um, market cap, that's completely wrong, but um, generally this 132 mil is the market cap. Uh, and keep in mind, looking here, the average, and this is a six month average, is around 99 million. So clearly over the last little bit, we've gained roughly about 600. Um, so a lot of people really liking this. And yeah, outstanding shares. I think you guys are already on point and already talked about that, but in the chat, 7 billion is what the outstanding shares is, which again, for a over-the-counter stock, not too bad. Uh, I definitely, I've covered HCMC in the past. That's one of the other notable uh, over-the-counter stocks. I'm sure you guys know that. They have like 70 times that of the outstanding shares, if not more. So uh, I think 7 billion is fairly good given the circumstances of uh, what Protext is and where they're at. So hopefully things start to have a nice little uh, rebound because I think also um, South Africa, it, again, depending on what their intention is, what the Republic, and I keep saying this, so Republic of South Africa Medical Marijuana Dispensaries Acquisitions LLC, um, what their intention is, if they're expanding, talking about expansion, and you can see at the very top, all the broader indexes are very much red with the exception of NASDAQ, but that most likely will turn red very soon. There's a lot of continuation of fear talking about recessions. So I think hopefully a lot of people jump over to protest with anticipation for um, it being a rally, um, seeing as a more of a safe haven. And they should be ending in about a couple minutes, and then the door will open for Protex, most likely. Wait, Danny, did you? Oh, I did not see that. End of day. I could see f uh, five cents, obviously, with a nice rebound ish, but end of day? Ooh, you're ambitious, Danny. That's a. Uh, I like it, though. I like ambition. You have to be ambitious and especially with uh, over-the-counter stocks. You never know, right? Things could just go up massively. Zero news, zero expectation. Um, and like I've already kind of said a couple times, we're very much lucky to actually have this conference pretty much right after the reverse uh, merger. Um, and hopefully they'll provide a little bit more context on that. All the news that has, as far as that's elite, like kind of, like kind of come out without rumors is that literally they're doing which they describe obviously the reverse merger they're just going to be taking over protext and moving all of their outstanding shares to protest uh doing pretty much a one-to-one -one swap um but they don't really talk on exactly what ratio how much um because that could determine a lot of different things um but still I think uh, there's a lot of different things that could be discussed because keep in mind if they are swapping and doing the reverse merger, um, again, it's a little bit hard to kind of find, determine what the South Ameri uh, South African um, kind of what their market cap is. Um, I've seen things float around saying multi-millions. Um, some say roughly about uh, 50 million. That seems to be a, a common thing. If not, uh, some people are even going as I saw one or two people say a couple billion, but I don't know. So I think um, it's hard to, do you guys know by chance what the market cap of uh, of them are? A RAMSAD or R RSA MMD? Which is actually on a side note, it is pretty cool. So I've covered quite a few stocks. I don't know if you guys know um, or follow my channel, but I do have done some over-the-counter stocks in the past. I typically like to do, uh, like I even said, I did Protex last year. RSA MMD responded to my actual video I did yesterday on Protex. So I think that's pretty cool, if you ask me. Um, clearly, they're actually looking at the news and a little bit more engaging. So I think, in general, um, that's a positive sign, clearly. Yeah, when I saw that, I was pretty stoked.
Oh, that's good stuff, Dan. Can you share any historical performance of the farm? What's the largest crop you've ever produced? Do you plan to farm on the whole? Oh yeah, okay. Those are yeah some pretty good questions. I will actually table that. Once they open the door, I will. Um, I'll definitely bring that up. Yeah, like I said, if you guys have any questions, I can definitely ask. And uh, like I said, during the conference, I am just going to stay muted because you guys don't need to hear me. I'm just here for entertainment purposes and uh, to have a nice venue for you guys. At the end, though, I'll uh, chime back in and I'll give you my um, talk on what I see, the good, the bad, the ugly, possibly, uh, but hopefully before it's done, we'll ask all the questions we can. Um, ask about revenues. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah, talking about infrastructure, I think that's a good one, Dan, too. Uh, but I'm tabling all your questions. Because I think, uh, yeah, the infrastructure, you definitely need them. And again, it's hard to compare the North American companies to um, kind of wh where South uh, South Africa is and because they're completely different markets. This is why the market, um, kind of the cost basis on uh, the South African, uh, on Protex is a lot lower than the North American companies I'm used to covering. But... Um, infrastructure is a very big deal. So yeah, that's right. A lot of good questions, guys. Revenue, 100%. And these guys, yes, they are done. Okay, so it looks like they will automatically update. So yeah, once I start hearing some noise, I will uh, chime back in. And uh, but yeah, other than that, it's pretty. Oh, Jonathan, you underestimate me. From the get-go, once they open the doors, I'm just going to be bombarding them with questions. Actually, you can already ask a question. So at least maybe. Um, Might as well get all the questions out, right? And actually, on a side note, maybe I'm going to wait. Mm, just trying to think, maybe these questions are going to the previous one, which was Avalon. No, I can't see them submitting those questions. This will be for the new one. I'm sure they're going to get a ton of questions anyways, right? Protex is absolutely huge. Yeah, keep them coming, guys. If you guys have any questions, bring it forward. I will put it out. You know what, Zavi? I'm just going to ask that. Only because, well, well, might as well. If not, at least they get a kick out of it, right? Get some funny questions. P 
Peter, um, to be honest, when I looked at ProText and looked at all their previous SDC, I couldn't exactly locate. It doesn't really say. It just references a general area. So. Yeah, of course, Dan. That's why I'm here. Hopefully, we all get the kind of uh, transparency that we want. But I think in general, no matter what they say, especially for an over-the-counter stock, anything they say, as long as they don't say something damaging, would put them at a higher valuation than this. So I think no matter what, they're in a very good position. They're in a win-win position, if you ask me. Um, unless they come out saying that they're going to be scaling back for some reason or something, or I don't know what they're going to do, but still uh, anything logically should cause it to go up and to help it as well. It looks like the broader indexes, some of them are starting to turn green. So Let's get these questions in. Let's get them started. So about eight more minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Zavi, my name's Cal. Only one employee? No, no, no. Protex, when I search it, they have 20. I'll find it right now. Let's find out. You are right, Dan. You are spot on. Somehow I was under, I remembered it being 30, but yeah. It does appear that current Protex mobility number of employees is one. But maybe because of this reverse merger, that might change significantly. But yeah, you're right. Good stuff, Dan. You know, you know your stuff. Well, that's not too bad, though. Sixty. Oh, anytime, uh, Zabby. Yeah, I think. Uh, so, what other over the counter stocks are you guys invested in and, uh, right now? So, it looks like we've dripped, uh, dropped about 3%. Uh, looks like it's going down a little bit more, which is weird because the broader market is going up. Oil's down, which is very positive. Um, when I was looking at this as well, I was watching uh, kind of the shorts as well, especially uh, the day after on the 14th, the short interest jumped significantly on uh, Um, so it does look like it roughly on a daily basis is about 50% of the volume or that's what it's being attributed to. So you're seeing a nice little bump. Um, so again, it's one of those things that depending on what they come out with from the conference, there could be a little bit of a, a squeeze as well. So this is where a lot of people um, has a lot of different alluring factors some people like this because of the volume some people want it because of the short interest some people just like the cannabis sector reverse merger there's a lot of things and attributes to love about all of this um, but of course there is a level of risk as well you have to take that with over-the-counter stocks sometimes information is not 
easy to find. And I think this is why a lot of people really like this. And I really like um, TXTM Pro Text. Because, yeah, when you're trying to find some information on some over the counter stocks, you have to become pretty much a, uh, like a PI to some, to some degree. Uh, Gus, not really. Yeah, Jack, yeah, no news is good news in many regards. Yeah, that's good. There we go. How many employees do you have currently and are you intending on hiring more in the future? So we'll see if we get an update from the one, which good stuff, Dan, on uh, provide with that information. Three more minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Then I'll take it off uh, speaker, then you guys, then I will mute myself, like I said, leave, uh, leave it to you guys. Make sure if you got, I'll be monitoring the chat though. So if you guys have any comments or any questions um, that you'd like asked, I can definitely do so. Yeah, yeah, I can ask about uh, a buyback as well. I can't see them doing that logically, but it uh, doesn't hurt in asking. Are you planning on buying back any shares in the short slash long term future? Because I know if we ask too specific of a question, are you buying back anything in the short term? They could easily just say no. But if you at least ask it broadly, it might just at least good to see if it's on their radar. Um, so hopefully at least. But I think someone already pointed out logically they only have 30 minutes and hopefully they don't leave the it only being five minutes for Q and A because even one of those questions could be elaborated longer than thirty minutes. Or that yet yeah, buyback share retirement same thing yeah. Make sure you guys uh, hit that thumbs up and subscribe and do all of that fun stuff. Greatly appreciate that. That is a good question. Okay, let's see. Yeah. So that's usually goes hand in hand with uh, shows their ambition behind the scenes. Um, so what's their intention? Like obviously if they say no, then I don't know. Cause keep in mind, NASDAQ does have some pretty strict um, entry level kind of things that they need to do. Um, but still. Okay, so it looks like it is showtime. Hopefully we get something coming. Oh, still nothing. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going to mute myself. Under the symbol TXTM, and is a jointly owned business of RSAMMD, a South African pioneer in the research 
cultivation, production, and distribution of medical cannabis and cannabinoids. Dr. J, who operates the 5,000 hectare Newcastle farm, as well as the federally issued cannabis and hemp licenses. Today, we are welcoming CEO and founder Dylan Deploy, as well as Dr. J and Dr. Hurley. Welcome everyone to the Emerging Growth Conference. We're happy to have you today. Thank you. Thank Zahir. you, welcome. Hi everybody. Hi TXTM Tribe. Thanks for having us. Thanks for taking the time to spend some time with us so we can thank you and tell you what's happening and how exciting it is. So just briefly, um, many know me, but we'll just go through it briefly. I am a registered medical doctor in South Africa. Um, you'll see later why I'm clarifying this, but a director of, amongst other companies, not just the farm, which are involved in, amongst other things, import, export, logistics, automotive, property development, management, particularly investments, uh, my favorite, paper assets, international business, um, of course, I love farming, uh, which includes hydroponics, grain, crops particularly, you know, uh, including not limited to soya and maize and barley and um, livestock, timber, charcoal, pecans, uh, now um, pomegranates as well. And I'm an interna international liaison promoting and enabling global cannabis investments uh, and joint ventures into local international economies. Uh, the idea is to make the world great again. And uh, wow, TXTM tribe, the catalyst. So we'd go through it, but my idea was the unification of common-minded people globally using cannabis as a catalyst to achieve the same, but not limited to. Because my thought process being that when you, when you put people together that have the same passion and the same motivation uh, with different areas of interest, context, et cetera, that you mitigate risk, you share resources, uh, you, you really uh, turn it successful. And more than that, you have fun doing it and you show people the importance of collaboration. And like I've always known to say, we are one Simonier. So down to the mission. The mission, of course, in the context of TXTM and this investor conference for which we're very grateful that's held, and I'm told that it is well attended. So awesome, awesome, awesome again. This is our idea, bring people together, make it work, uh, mass collaborate, uh, you know, um, things including but not limited to, you know, uh, doing it as a tribe. Um, so obviously shareholder value. That's the point here. My thoughts are in time, a loyalty, a trust will grow because of how diverse we are and the diversity that the investors themselves add. And you could see the resultant of, 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 of last week's performance that we formed this TXTM global tribe. What a phenomenon. Uh, and, you know, to serve as a nucleus, as I said, for the common-minded people. Uh, and, you know, by ripple effect, we can touch the many globally. And we've actually, uh, you know, uh, done it. And then we thank you for coming to actually, uh, you know, un unlock that with us. Um, the idea being transparency. The reason for this, many people have asked, ultimately, healing getting the product out there. Uh, I have Dr. Hurley with me. I know the many uh, testimonials that we get all over the world. They're starting to call it the anointed oil. And let's not lose sight of the fact that that's the purpose. And when you do a job like that, that's well done. Uh, a side effect of it, of course, is money. And uh, that is what we're talking about today in terms of shareholder value. But there's an element of philanthropy there, empathy, uh, you know, the beauty of it is it's, it's, it's environmentally respons responsible. There's the green element to it. And my thoughts is it's the tsunami of change. It's driven by a kindness currency. I mean, 100% in a week. Wow. 100, that's 100, 1,000%, 1, excuse me, 1,000% in a week. That's 100% per year over 10 years. Um, and we're just getting started together, of course. Um, the idea behind it, is, is a solution to a problem everybody in the world cares about. And cannabis is all the fever now, and, and rightfully so it should be for not just what it does in the cannabinoid system and, uh, you know, cures to diseases known and unknown, which is interesting for us because we'd like to unlock some of that with you in the future. But you, you create a viable solution in our opinion, 
uh, we've done that. And now we're here to share that and ripple effect it with the many. Um, you know, a system which produces a solution on a global level. And, and, and uh, we've done that as well. Um, you know, with distribution so that that solution can reach everyone on the planet. And uh, I always enjoy saying, including the metaphors. All of which I think, you know, we, we, we've done. As, as, uh, as businessmen, farmers, international experience, and, you know, Dr. Hurley was going to say, why did you talk about? Well, hey, Miami, I'm a Barry University boy. And uh, we'll get into later where uh, we come across uh, Congressman Matt Gates and now soon to be, I hope, uh, Governor uh, uh, Nikki Freed. But also, um, you know, this was started a while ago and we could see where it was heading. So we could have we directed it in that direction, you know, as uh, American medical uh, marijuana physicians and all grow as well. Um, the idea being that it's duplicable, replicable, equitable and an exportable model. Uh, not only that, what what, what, what what suit what I like particularly uh, is that it, it's it's responsible. You know, it's going green, uh, the carbon footprint, the green economy, COP26 particularly, and notwithstanding what that means in terms of carbon credit farming as well financially. But uh, you know, during this journey on the on the philanthropic side, we, we've enjoyed initially education and continuity on education, stigma removal, female upliftment poverty eradication, eradication of inequality, you know, gender equality. When we had four or 500 ladies working on the farm, they earn the same. Their husbands tend to teach them a little bit better. And uh, really blessed, you know, it ended up being a feeding scheme. Uh, there's a farm school. And as such, it's, it's it, like I say, it's duplicable. It's uh, replicable. And, and we see on SMMEs that that's the solution done together as clusters, done over, done, you know, internationally. And, uh, you know, with people that have uh, common minds, we're permitted, we're piloted, we're gazetted, we're a center of excellence. We uh, have uh, import permits and export permits. We have import and export permits into countries like the USA um, in our own name with uh, import concessions. We do a lot to promote this. So we have government to government support, which changes things significantly and streamlines them. Um, my thought process about how we uh, see our future with TXTM is initially the merger. And the merger, obviously, people saw that it, it, the value that it adds to you know, the, uh, the existing TXTM and notwithstanding ourselves, and, and particularly the shareholders, is, and, and what we were hoping, and, uh, and, and I'm gonna apologize, it seemed like some of the slides and, and uh, videos that we wanted to share with you uh, actually haven't come through, but uh, there'll be time yet. We're gonna be spending a lot of time together. Um, is our human capital. We're hoping to isolate that um, throughout the, the days to follow so that you can know who it is and what value they add and uh, you know find your uh, spot with us because we always say a place for everyone and everyone a place. And it's gonna be interesting. And at the same time, I would be avert to hailing the rest of the tribe in Switzerland, Germany, Israel, UK, USA, via the USA into the Caribbean and South America, uh, via Australia, where we due to get not just our, uh, we've got a schedule eight there as well. Soon our Mexican permit will, will, will be issued to us is, uh, you know, uh, via uh, Singapore into the East. So, um, you know, uh, all in place, not pitch deck, all done, ready to rock and roll, we, you know, waiting on the tribe to find their spot. In, in each and every one of these sections that, that uh, they, they find uh, passion in. Um, you know, there's also the change in management and, and notwithstanding um, that, I think that's really the kicker here. Um, you know, uh, we have our acquisitions in place, we have the funds for it. Uh, you know, I, I like to say with gratitude that we are zero debt, um, we have a our POs, our purchase orders in place, these are credit worthy companies. Should we need capital, they can obviously be discounted. But again, we don't. Uh, they obviously will affect the balance sheet, will affect your share, your stock. And, uh, you know, um, uh, the strategic acquisition companies. And at some point, I really would love to tell you about these guys because, you know, the product is not just all over the, the world through their efforts. Uh, and uh, we see the healing, we see the testimonials but they will add significant EBITDA to the balance sheet. They're similar thinkers, they're in the game B2C, 
uh, notwithstanding our cost base, given South Africa is so much less. And, and not just that, uh, where we're able to plant not just one, but two crops a year. But, you know, we... Are we still on? Yes. Okay, great. So, you know, the, our, our latitude, our sun, it, it, the, the crops do different things here, not just indoor and outdoor, but the difference being able to plant two and three crops significantly changes cost profitability. You know, we've had our soil samples done. We've uh, just finished with our last crop. Our winter crop is in. We've got our fertilizer. We're really best. We're really ready to go. And that's where the merger is going to significantly affect um, you know, the, the value, the cap capex of TXTM and subsequently the shareholders. And actually, we're very, very happy. We want to share that. Uh, you know, uh, where people ask, would you reverse um, buyback stock? Would you split? Why would you do this? Because we feel that when the tide should rise, many boats, not just one. Of course, we can do this on our own. We already have been doing it. But... Um, you know, future, of course, we were talking about purchase orders from, from uh, in place, uh, somewhere in the region of 300, 400 million at, at, at present. Uh, again, uh, credit worthy companies could be factored if we need cash flow. Um, we mentioned briefly uh, about our crypto. And I'll take a moment and I'll explain that. We talk about stable coins and you know, as an example, the United States crypto was based on a currency that was volatile. Our coins are stabilized. They're stable based on the fact that they're underwritten. And the said under, uh, you know, right, writing is insured. And so is the return. And I think that's very cool because uh, not only is it mutually beneficial, but it undoubtedly brings significant and large amounts of cash flow into the company. And notwithstanding its ability to then as well in in, in uh a conjunction with uh, you know our, the ability to issue corporate bonds, uh, you know our, our paper assets is really uh, you know what I like. Our strength is what I, you know we are in a position where we can uh, guarantee returns and guarantee principal, uh, which allows us to have stable coins, allows us to put out corporate bonds if we need to, basically allows us in advance. Uh, and Dr. Hurley has, has graciously put up one of the smaller type of investment that we have with a guarantee on principal and return. And not only that, the guarantee is on the is, is on the payout amount. So you, you're basically inventing or having access to significantly more money than you're putting in. Well, you know, uh, notwithstanding the inventory in stock, whether it be our biomass uh, into oil and, and our end products, uh, seeds particularly, uh, you know, my dad always said, if you can count it, it's not enough. And I try not to do that, but I think without this season and the winter season, we're somewhere around two, three billion in just seeds alone, which we're happy to to, to, to put onto the balance sheet. We're happy to capitalize the company. Um, I will tell you that a uh, favorite saying of mine, you're going to hear it all the time, Shakespeare, to be safely thus. So as well as everything being in place, I'm always one that in addition likes to ensure its tax deductible expenses. So, for example, you know, uh, equity default insurance, just to mention a few for those that are uh, somewhat squiggly. Uh, operations, of course, you know, uh, massive expansion, um, as much as you want to plant two seasons, infrastructure in place. Uh, like I said, costs already uh, accounted for fertilizer, seed, uh, and all of that, and uh, as well as uh, soil samples being done. Um, sales distribution. The key here, you know, with the global distribution as it is, but with our, our acquisitions, which are in place as well, and funds in place for the same, uh, notwithstanding that this farm fits in with a group and uh, there's expansion, that infrastructure and those resources are there to support it. But carbon credits particularly, I mean, at the moment, we're showing, um, and it's a very relatively new industry, notwithstanding, Africa as well, in Africa, and what it means in the green footprint. But our carbon credits for now is, is you know, on five years is 10 billion US dollars, uh, which, you know, we, we, we will obviously use uh, to capitalize the company as and as, as when we need. Um, you know, uh, 
Of course, the future growth is exciting, how, uh, not just on the cannabis hemp side and how we use the whole plant and the many, many, many uses uh, as a pilot that we have to show that is not only can be done in their markets for locally and internationally, but also had fun doing it. I mean, the use of from, from roots and frindolin and uh, you know, hemp st uh, stalks and hud and uh, flowers and hemp seed oil and high protein powder and cattle feed and uh, you know, into having bees on the plantation and what that amounts to in canna honey, uh, infused water, uh, I mean, uh, blocks, uh, just to mention a few, but, you know, we know the many, many uses. Uh, at the moment, I would say somewhere around 60,000 uses of hemp. Remember, this is old. You just go back to history and you will see. I mean, this is not the first Levi's hemp gene, uh, if, you, if, you, if you can follow my train of thought. Um, but expansion on the farm will not only be in hemp and cannabis on the industrial side and the continuity med medicinal side, but, you know, we have the necessary approvals, pilots, documentation, both locally and internationally in expansions in the same sort of uh, um, crop lines and ideas and medication like poppies, ayahuasca. We have them, we're planting them. It's not new. We're, we, we, we're doing work with them. Exciting work. Also, how do they fit in with cannabis? That's also exciting. We've grown on a cannabis substrate, and boy, do I think that's going to have taken up cannabinoids. But yeah, exciting. Um, we were talking about whole plant usage. It's it, it it lets you not only just how we effectuate this on the farm with multiple crops and fixed infrastructure, crop rotation, you know, phyto remediation, sequestration of carbon, uh, using you know, given the circumstances now, which were we anticipated, COVID, economic downturn. Uh, the stock market, uh, yeah, exchange rates and whatnot, we predicted it. We said we'd be debt-free and we'd be in cash. And not only can we help ourselves, but we're able to help others. And that allows you to, with the, with the multiple crops as well, you know, have a very low cost base. And, you know, uh, in all, as a pilot, all sorts of extraction, for example, we had the pleasure of, um, of, of, of using and we have on the farm, you know, from... Uh, little things like, uh, you know, screw presses to bubble hash to to doing it with ethanol, which is our favorite, and ultrasound nano stabilizing, etc. cetera. But, uh, but Dr. Hurley particularly, and, and we're talking about our cost base, notwithstanding our ever-weakening currency, which helps you uh, in terms of our exports in stronger currencies, but also with forward cover. But Dr. Hurley is blessed. She can extract it, you know, Typically, eight, six, seven, eight hundred thousand milligrams of fecal and not distillates and, 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 and dilutions uh, and, and, and rates far exceeding the norm at six, eight, twelve percent, somewhere in the 20s when she's lucky, 25 sometimes. And that helps with the cost base as well, notwithstanding my idea that everybody should have access to cannabis and uh, how it affects your life. And of course, you know, we're excited about how it fits into the metaverse because it's got to be the joining of reality with virtual reality. And of course, we're you know, three in artificial intelligence. But you will also enjoy the fact that on the farm, we like that we've got cameras all over the pivots and we, we do a lot with, with, uh, with our drones and uh, plant health and all the other technical stuff like row width and plant uh, populations and whatnot. Uh, of course, you know, we were moving into the strategic acquisitions the pipelines, they're in the end stage. It takes you to B2C from a low cost, which helps you with your profit margins. Uh, distribution companies, uh, of course, supply chains in other countries. We mentioned earlier, you know, South America, CARICOM, USA, um, North and South America, Australia, particularly via Singapore into the East, and the many joint ventures that we have and, and the CNDs that we've signed. Um, and, uh, you know, we're very excited and people were asking me, uh, where do we see this going? So we, we went past things like, are we going to have a reverse split? Are we going to buy back stock? So as a scientist, that's the numerator. Everyone today wants to know, uh, that's the denominator, apologies, wants to know what the numerator is. So we can have some sort of calculation on where we'll be with stock. And I will tell you that we have seen some interesting calculations. For example, how much, how big is the farm? Does it make one, two or three crops? Is that just a crop and does it end up being an end product like oil and does that oil end up in America in dollars uh, with the duty-free concession into America or what? But what I will say to you is this. What I've seen 
And I say it with humility and grace to, the, to, to, to everyone here and God for efforts made over four generations. But there are at least a hundred times less than actually what's on the, what, what, what's on the paper and what we're hoping to put forward for TXTM and the world as a whole. And, and with this thought process where we actually add value to each other in a transparent way, uh, loyalty, trust, and diversity, we decrease costs by mitigating risk and sharing resources and the passions and, 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 and AKA TXTM tribe, uh, which will, will has a ripple effect now and is touching the whole world and I'm grateful for. But also we mustn't forget that it's about healing, uh, that there's unsolicited acts of kindness on a day-to-day -day basis that you can do that cost you nothing. The smallest thing, a smile, telling someone that's in trouble, this too might, will pass, encouraging words. One of my favorite things is mentorship. And of course, enablement. And that's what we're trying to do here together is to be the change that you wish to see in the world and but start with yourself. You know, in a gentle way, everyone can shake the world. And we've done it. And especially now merging with TXTM, uh, you know, each one, teach one, uh, help one. It becomes that feeling is contagious. Uh, you know, it's it's the unification of common minded people with common goals. Uh, cannabis happens to be and now TXTM as the catalyst for this thought process and this unification. And our idea, and it goes back to shareholder value, this is not about hand downs, but legs up. And by ripple effect, you will see this globally and not forgetting the, the metaverse. So um, again, before I, I, I share and I hand over to uh, who uh, Dr. Hurley and, and Dylan Deploy is to tell you to take comfort in the fact that um, we're just getting started on the stock value. And if you want to have a calculation, give me a couple of months so I can figure out just how much it is. Thanks so much. Can I introduce you to Dr. Hurley? Are you ready, Dr. Hurley? Yes. Dr. Hurley is again, Miami. She's a pediatric cardiac anesthetist, uh, Jackson Memorial amongst others, just called Children's. And I'll let her get into the medicine side of uh, cannabis. Thanks. Hello everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, we don't have much time left, so I'll just try to go through this um, as much as we can to give you as much information um, that I can. Um, one of the people, one of the questions uh, that everyone is asking is, where do we see the future of the medicinal side? And I know that this is very important to a lot of people. And as you can see from what Dr. J said, we do a lot here. We do a lot aside from the medicine. But I will talk about the medicinal side in the last few minutes that we have. Um, so, what do we do? What are we going to do about the medicinal side? We're going to do what we do best. We're going to produce quality products that save people's lives. Cannabis has cannabinoids that act at the CB1 and CB2 receptors in the endocannabinoid system in the human body and in animals. We see very positive effects from cannabis treatment throughout all the systems in the body, thus re resulting in benefits for treating many diseases. This is why most people are attracted to smoking cannabis because they're self-medicating themselves. Before cannabis was banned, we used to get exposure with cannabis uh, from the animals and the animal's milk. But since that ban has occurred years ago, we are not exposed to that anymore. Um, and therefore we've developed a dysfunctional endocannabinoid system. Thus, we get to have very severe inflammation throughout our bodies, which is the response to a dysfunctional endocannabinoid system. Due to this, um, we find that there's lots of diseases. And we produce a full extract cannabis oil, and it has wide variety of disease uh, uh, benefits in a wide variety of diseases. We've seen excellent results with our products in various countries, uh, USA, Romania, Switzerland, the UK, and of course, South Africa. Our best seller is tried and tested and is commonly called the anointed oil, as Dr. J alluded to. It's all organic, it's a full spectrum oil full of various terpenes and flavonoids, um, just as nature intended. We have plans to take over the extraction system uh, owned by Protex Pharma. We are very excited about the continued, to continue the studies that were started by Roger Delfield in 2019, with the original trial actually performed on our farm in Newcastle at that time. We will take over where they left off, the extraction of live plants 
at low temperatures, producing a botanical extract with cannabinoids in their acid form, producing THCA and CBDA is extremely exciting. This increases the bioavailability of the cannabinoids, of, uh, of the cannabinoids THCA and THCB, allowing for uh, um, longer bioactivity will then allow us to give a daily dose treatment, which is very good in patients with chronic pain. The problem that we have with a lot of the um, oils and the cannabis that we have these days is it doesn't last uh, long enough. You have to take it maybe four to six times a day. You can take tablets, but then they go through the liver, which also then reduces the bioavailability. And then what we do sometimes is we will supplement in between that with vaping um, so that people that have chronic pain or cancer are then having a continuous, um, would you say maybe a continuous supply in their bodies. Now we've also um, been, uh, it, it, sorry, we've also been um, approved for uh, the first um, South African um, research on chronic pain. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and replace, well, we will, I'm confident that we will, replace the opioids with cannabis. So if we can get this um, new technology or the new extraction process up and running, then we can use this in our um, uh, study, in our research, and we can replace the opioids. The reason that this works so well is that cannabis acts on the same mu receptors as opioids do. And as we all know, there's a terrible um, addiction in the United States with opioids. So we've been looking at reducing these opioids and replacing the opioids with the cannabis to um, uh, alleviate the, the addiction. The second goal that we have in the medicinal side is, is that uh, education. We need healthcare workers to know they need to get CVD and, and know how to prescribe the cannabis. We need the patients to be aware of what's happening. They need to ensure good quality products. Um, and we need to educate the government. The government is, is not really clued up on a lot of um, cannabis and, and uh, we need to teach them. And most of all, we need to remove the stigma there is no stigma with um, cannabis and people need to realize that it's not a gateway drug. You're not gonna be addicted. It's gonna help you. All products must have certification and analysis and they must also be the correct dose that's, that's um, placed on the label. Patients must confirm the qualifications of their healthcare provider and what extraction technique was done. Um, every day we find new uses of cannabis. During COVID, many patients were saved using cannabis here in South Africa, where most of them have no access to healthcare. Um, we also, as, as uh, Dr. Jay mentioned, our future plans, we are looking into psilocybin and using it for um, some depression and other psychological disorders. We're very excited to share our, our extensive knowledge of cannabis with like-minded people like yourselves and the uh, TXTM tribe for a greater purpose. We would like to supply affordable quality products to the masses, not just a select few. If everyone takes cannabis daily, I'm confident that we will have a better world. We're building an industry from scratch, just our blood, sweat, and tears to get it off the ground. How's the time? Um, we do? Okay. Um, I'd just like to show a few things if, if I can. Um, just so you know that we have products where we don't just show pictures of them. Um, we have one of our oils here. I don't know if you can see it. This is a 600 milligram, which is um, a mostly CBD with a trace amount of THC so that we get the entourage effect. And this is one of the uh, oils that is, is very, very good in a multiple doses, multiple uh, diseases. We have an oil here, which is very good. It's a cream. We use it for psoriasis and um, uh, skin cancers, eczema, uh, a lot of different types of diseases, and it's working very well. We have a pre and post workout. So the, the goal is that you put one on before you work out and the, the other one after you work out for a cooling effect. We have hip breaths, 
which is a base like a cigarette made out of uh, mostly CBD. This was very good in um, COVID. We had a lot of restrictions in COVID um, with cigarettes. They banned tobacco here. So a lot of people turned uh, to smoking cannabis and actually it's more health it, it's much more healthy and also it actually got them off of tobacco which was a, a, a good side effect that we didn't really expect um, we have for our four-legged friends we have um, doggy treats uh, and they work well for any type of anxiety or anything that the, the um, animals may be experiencing we, and then we do have a, a small range for what we would call adult responsible adult usage. So we have a vape. I don't know if you can see it too well. Um, and that is made with uh, all safe products. There's nothing that's going to cause popcorn lungs or anything like that. Um, we also have a, a pre-roll, which is uh, also... Um, cannabis and this would be someone that you know it isn't looking to smoke a cigarette but maybe just wants CBD. Are we finished? No, we have some what we just oh. Dylan was reminding me that we didn't actually I got so excited about cannabis that I didn't mention that the farm actually does a lot more than Oh yeah cannabis. let's do that yeah okay. you know soya, maize, barley, pecans, pomegranates, you know, uh, and into biochar. Uh, you know we talked about the expansion but uh, mushrooms and, and psilocybin, of course, mushrooms, ayahuasca, e coca, other things like that. Uh, but we do, and, and it works perfectly with crop rotations and whatnot. So he also said that we would, we, we, it, it did, in terms of, 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 of uh, bringing out how that fits in and how that reduces costs and how it's eco friendly and how it fits in all together. But notwithstanding that, uh, my thoughts are about how we show that, in effect, this company fits in with cannabis, TXTM, and in effect works as a bank. Uh, I don't think we got to post the type of returns we, 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 we receive which, uh, from fixed instruments, which allows you to have peace of mind, notwithstanding what we already do uh, in this company, uh, and uh, in, it fits into the healing and, 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 the, and the revenue. Um, also, I just want to do in passing, uh, clarify, that we will obviously be able to 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 at any given time, uh, you know, uh, give an indication of, of 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 what the farm does and its revenue and how it fits in, if need be, to some of our other enterprises. So I said it'll take a few months to do it. I was joking. What I was trying to say is take comfort in the fact that uh, we're not short and we're happy to uh, put that in to uh, make our course what it is, so that there's cannabis available for everyone globally like Dr. Hurley said, and how that affects and influences the shareholder value of TXTM. So we will at some point in time, uh, and hopefully as soon as possible, when we get through showing you who the human capital of the company is and the change in management, what the merger actually equates to on paper. And like I said, the purchase orders that are upcoming uh, and what we're going to put into the balance sheet in terms of inventory that we own, uh, notwithstanding any uh, things like our carbon credits, our seed banks, and our current uh, crops, uh, and uh, you know products that are, are already um, have orders for. But we will. Um, I think uh, Dylan uh, brought to my attention that perhaps people are more uh, inclined to get uh, something sooner than that. So, of course, we will be um, bringing that forward as soon as uh, you know within the next couple of days. I do think that we should let you know who our human capital is as well. And like I said, take comfort in the fact that it will significantly increase shareholder value, which is my primary purpose, aside from healing and uh, creating and strengthening the tribe. And again, it's it's uh, a sizable. Uh, I would like uh, our CEO, Dylan Deploy, to at least have the opportunity to say hi to the TXTM tribe. Uh, I'm the more boring one, so uh, come say hello, Dylan. <laughs> Hello, tribe. Lovely to meet all of you. I'm the loudmouth all over the, south, the social media. Um, I hope that everyone's committed, that you really believe in what's going on and what we're trying to do for humanity. We obviously see that a lot of people are just in it for the money, and it's not really about that. So, I don't know. Let's, um, let's change the world together. Any questions? Can you take so, some of the questions? I think the time is up. Okay. Let's, let's find out from Anna.
Wow, you you guys did such a great presentation. Um, We are out of time because we have to move on to our next presenter. But please, this is important stuff you're dealing with. And you guys have a lot of heart in this business. So uh, please come back again. Give us uh, some updates. Take a little bit more time next time so we can get these questions answered. We have tons of questions for you. But don't worry, we'll send them directly to you so you can answer on your own. But join us again. This is valuable, valuable time here. Thank you guys for joining us. We do appreciate it, and we will answer all the questions individually, and we apologize to those where we couldn't get the IT uh, videos we wanted to share, but we will do that later. And again, thank you so much, all. Thank you, Tribe. Uh, Way forward together. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll see you again next time. Okay, everyone, stay with us. We have our last presenter coming up. We'll be right back. Cool. Okay. So let's see. Um, Basically, based on the price, hasn't really um, affected it too much. If anything, it midway during uh, the presentation, it did go up roughly about 4% uh, from this lows. Um, But it does appear that there were some good things that was said from it. Um, But at the end of the day, you always need to keep in mind, this is a uh, high risk, high return investment. Any over the counter stock is. Some good t- uh, key takeaways. <clears throat> uh, they basically have no debt. Uh, they are doing a, a very interesting thing with uh, incorporating cryptocurrency. Uh, so that in reality is fairly good because that means no dilution, but yet they have access to a lot of capital. Um, and not only that, they have a lot of good um, plans to expand. And they're clearly focusing a lot on uh, psilocybin. Uh, so obviously the magic mushrooms which will help with their crop rotation. Unfortunately, they didn't really go into a lot of the details or even have time to go over our questions though. But I think uh, he clearly said that there was going to be a lot of significant shareholder value coming. Um, No. Uh, Yeah, no, this always updates, I believe. Yeah, no, it's updated. I think Luke, yeah. That's that's updated, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, no. Let me know your guys' thoughts on that. Um, I think it was okay of a presentation. Um, I think my interpretation, how I saw them as they they're they're not the they they said that there's clearly going to be a lot of value coming, but they're clearly more for the medical side um, versus the showmanship of what we expect a CEO to do to come in and say you know what this is going to the moon blah 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 um, they came in more so from mechanic uh, medical component side so I think that's what it is I think there's going to be a lot of value and hopefully um, the f- mere fact that we didn't completely sell off is very realistic um, and it does look like we're continuing to go down. Most likely a lot of people didn't really like that. Um, but you also have to factor in that look how much we've gone up, roughly give or take about 800, 900%. It is going to be normal that we consolidate a little bit. But what over-the-counter stock out there has no debt? That's, and completely, I think they said it roughly about three or four times, they want to increase shareholder value. Um, I think... I think it's good. Oh, did it? Uh Uh-oh. Okay. Well, maybe this is... As far as I always was under the impression, this is up to date, but clearly... Let me check. Yeah, you're right. Yep. This is a little bit delayed, so it is, uh, clearly looks like people did not like that. Yeah, you're right, uh, Luke, uh, CNBC. Well, I guess in general, personally, um, 
I still see it as a pretty significant value. Of course, there's going to be a lot of people taking a lot of profits, um, but clearly the timing of when this is selling off coincides with the fact that they didn't really address any questions or address any specifics. They, it seems like they cared a little bit more about the reverse merger um, versus even taking over Protex. They said that they're going to be taking over Protex in uh, the coming, in the short term, but they have no, it seems like they, their actual day-to-day -day business is a little bit more of a priority. So about that reverse merger, maybe that was what their overall priority was. Um, but still, in any regard, having significant volume, um, it's like a, like we always say, high risk, high, um, high risk, high return. Yeah, this might be a good entry possibly for you guys, depending on how much, uh, but Rondell, you brought up about HMC. I don't, HMC is actually moving away from what TXTM is. So might not necessarily be the best. And yet you can see pretty much right here it is. It most likely is about 10 minutes delayed. So it's having a quite a significant sell off right now with very little volume. So it goes to show that nobody is, there's a lot of sellers, just nobody's really buying. So that's kind of why it's tanking. But like someone already mentioned, good time to buy if you guys uh, see this, um, which in reality, um, yeah, I think in general, it's it could have said a little bit more better uh, attributes. And to be honest, um, I can't remember her name, but when she spoke, I think they could have just completely cut that because we all know that uh, they have a lot of products. Every cannabis company has a lot of different products, which is good that they wanted to try and market that, but I think it addressing shareholders' concern, especially roughly about a week after a reverse merger, I think the priority should have been placed on answering those questions and going over a little bit more specifics, not necessarily the products. But still, it is what it is. It's... Uh, can't really change that. They did say, uh, say that clearly they are going to answer those questions. Hopefully they stand true. And uh, he did reiterate several different times um, about uh, shareholder value. So clearly it's good. But yeah, I just wanted to pop on. Um, it seems like the market is not really appreciating the full um, presentation from this. Um, it did pull back a little bit, so it's actually at one cent right now. So a good um, psychological barrier, obviously, or resistance point. So lucky for those that got in, they made a quick 20%, um, which you can make a lot of money very fast on over-the-counter stocks. Just uh, like we always say, high risk, high return. But with all that said, appreciate you guys watching. I just wanted to go on, share this with you guys. Make sure you guys listen to it again if you guys haven't or have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll definitely address them um, and I'll, I'll continue to monitor. And if there's any updates, I'll definitely provide additional uh, videos as well. Don't forget to also hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Um, I greatly appreciate that. But as Jack said, sometimes no news is, is good news, especially when over the counter stock. But I appreciate you guys watching guys and you guys have a good rest of the day.